Well, there's been a lot going on in the markets, from earnings to Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's speech at Jackson Hole last week, which have kept investors questioning risks in the U.S. economy. And so how can you best take advantage? Well, our next guest says that investors should be focusing on fixed income ETFs and specifically investment grade corporate bonds. As part of the ETF report brought to you by Invesco QQQ, let's bring in Franklin Income Investors Senior Vice President and Portfolio Manager Todd Brighton to discuss this more. Good to see you, Todd. So start with some of your top picks here then in this environment. Morning, Michelle. Thank you for having me. Uh, so income is an uh, INCM is an actively managed multi-asset ETF. We employ a flexible asset allocation policy that allows us to deploy capital in areas of the market that offer the most attractive uh, prospects for current income as well as capital appreciation. So as you talked about, we do have a preference for uh, fixed income today, uh, specifically higher grade investment grade corporate bonds. So as we look across the landscape, we think about the different risks, the, the places we can allocate to, we really think about it as three broad buckets uh, and those being uh, interest rate or duration, uh, equity market risk, and then credit. And as we sit today, we've obviously have a, a rate dynamic that looks uh, significantly different than it did 12 to, to 18 months ago. Um, and we have, um, you know, yields in the investment grade space approaching 6%. Uh, those are yields we haven't seen uh, in upwards of 10 years. If we rewind the clock, uh, you know, to the middle of the pandemic, we had the, the 10 year uh, U.S. government bond yielding uh, 50 basis points with cash yields at zero. So really the backdrop uh, within interest rates has changed uh, tremendously, which has really changed our calculus as we think about multi-asset investing, think about looking at equities, uh, investment grade, high yield bonds. Um, so that, that's really led us to um, what we see as a really tremendous opportunity within uh, investment grade. And that's very different from where our multi-asset uh, portfolios uh, sat two years ago, where we had much more equity market risk, much more equity uh, investments within our portfolios. Hey, Todd, Brad here. Uh we want to talk more about this, this idea of selectivity within equities and, and what that actually looks like in practice. Yeah, so, you know, clearly uh, we think there are opportunities within equities. Uh, it's been a very uh, interesting, a very narrow uh, market this year, I'm sure, as everybody is well aware that the seven horsemen uh, really driving the market forward. And we think what that, that has done is, you know, a, a lot of sectors, a lot of industries, uh, you know, have been left behind. They might be, uh, you know, have strong secular trends, but are facing, you know, more short term cyclical dynamics. I would point to something um, like the analog semiconductor industry. Obviously, there, there's pockets of, of the semi industry like NVIDIA that everybody's quite uh, quite aware of that have done extremely well. But there's other pockets um, that have struggled as we've kind of dealt with the, uh, the inventory issue uh, in the channels. Um, they are starting to, to work through that. But as we look longer term and we look at the analog semiconductor content that's in a electric vehicle, that's in an autonomous vehicle, that's in uh, what's required for factory automation, what's going on uh, within data center. These are tremendously strong long-term secular drivers for this industry. So uh, that's an area that we find uh, particularly uh, attractive today, as I mentioned, uh, you know, possibly facing some short-term cyclical uh, issues, but over the long-term, we think they'll do extremely well. You mentioned the seven horsemen. I mean, we, we've heard so many different takes on the sevens. There's the Magnificent Seven, there's the seven horsemen, I mean, you can go serendipitous seven, whatever. At the end of the day, has there been a clear ETF play that's emerged as a result of the successes of the, the sevens? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm probably not the best uh, place to answer that. I think, you know, as, as I discussed, we focus really around uh, multi-asset income investing, and that's how how we think about investing. We do think, uh, you know, there are plenty of, uh, of areas uh, within the market. I mentioned uh, investment grade corporate debt, but also non-investment grade uh, and within equities where you can uh, find not only, uh, you know, current income, but as well as those prospects uh, for capital appreciation. So we think INCM is a, is a particularly attractive um, vehicle for, for investors looking for, for income as well as, uh, as well as growth.
And Todd, what would signal a turning point in the sort of ETFs that you're focused on right now? Obviously, you have an interest rate environment that's a little bit uncertain, fears of a recession coming up, potentially if the, if the Fed can't stick that soft landing next year. What were some of the signals that you'll be watching for when it's time to rotate in or out of some of these ETFs? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, for our positioning today, uh, what we've seen over the last couple of days has been, um, you know, so we're in that interesting time period where, uh, you know, challenging or, or slightly softer economic data uh, is better. We think that's good for our, our positioning. Uh, obviously, uh, rates ha have gone lower a little bit over the last couple of days. The equity market has, has liked what they've seen. But I think as we move forward in this, if we continue to see continued soft uh, economic data, that will start uh, to be a little more negative for equities and potentially positive uh, for fixed income uh, and, and bonds. So we're watching. We do think we're in a, a very challenging time period today. Uh, we've heard from uh, Chair Powell many times over the last couple of weeks, just most recently at Jackson Hole, that the Fed is very data dependent. They are, they are uh, you know, willing to, to move and have another uh, interest rate increase if necessary, uh, but there also, um, you know, could be at the end as well. So uh, I think what we've seen um, over the last couple of days, the economic data uh, has been helpful for us being at the end of the interest rate hiking cycle. Um, but, you know, we will be, uh, you know, very cognizant of the data that comes out over the next couple of months. The Fed's obviously watching it very closely. And, and I think for us, uh, regardless of whether there is uh, one more increase or whether we are done at this point, we are much nearer to, to the end. Uh, you know, we are digesting over 500 basis points uh, of interest rate increases in the economy today. And now we're talking about maybe there's uh, one more, 25 basis points more. But otherwise, we're near the end. And now we're just talking about uh, the length of how long uh, the Fed will, will hold interest rates at that level. Franklin Income Investor, Senior Vice President and Portfolio Manager, Todd Brighton. Todd, thanks for taking the time here with us today. Thank you, Brad.